I'm Nikki Lechniak, and welcome to this episode of the 502 Report. With lower revenues than expected this year, Metro Louisville's leadership is looking at ways to tighten its belt. From department heads to Facebook fans, all ideas are welcome. Though the economy is improving, lower than expected occupational taxes for the city have caused a significant budget shortfall. But with some help from various metro agencies and a large one-time settlement from Insight Communications, this year's city budget is now balanced. The timing of the settlement is obviously fortunate, uh, keeping, the keeping the city from having to take even more significant measures to reduce services to close the deficit. However, the settlement is just a one-time deal, and we still have to address our long-term structural imbalance balance in which expenses are exceeding revenues. The $12 million gap was offset through $3.5 million from Insight, nearly $7 million from city departments, and by eliminating nine currently vacant positions. These are all positions that were filled one, at one time during the year, and uh, when they became vacant, uh, we, those monies were budgeted for a full year, so, so it was an opportunity to take those instead of refilling the positions. But Mayor Fisher cautions that more permanent structural cuts will have to be made especially considering next year's expected $20 million shortfall. And city layoffs aren't out of the question yet. We have a structural problem with our cost of our pensions, uh, overtime, et cetera. So that's what we'll be taking a look at right now over the next couple of months is how we're going to meet these $20 million, this $20 million challenge. 70, 75 percent of the city's budget is people, is personnel related. So obviously it, it becomes challenging to make a whole lot of cuts if people aren't involved. That is the last thing that we want to do but we have to keep everything on the table. The first of GE's new product lines is up and running, turning out a product that's both eco-friendly and good for Louisville. Today we get to see the first payback from the company's billion dollar investment in GE appliances. GE's Louisville Appliance Park is humming with activity. Their new hybrid water heater manufacturing facility is the first major investment at the park in more than 50 years. Not only is GE investing about $800 million in its Louisville facility, but it's reversing decades of outsourcing by bringing hundreds of jobs to Louisville and creating many spin-off jobs too. GE Appliances has committed to create more than 1,000 new jobs in Kentucky by 2014. And that is really something to celebrate. You guys are not just setting the pace and the tone for global manufacturing in America. You're setting the pace for our city day in and day out as well. And all this is to create a new product, the hybrid electric geospring water heater, which offers an energy efficient alternative to standard water heaters, saving consumers about $325 a year on their water heating utility bills. The geospring hybrid water heater is the most innovative and the most energy efficient, and if I do say so myself, most attractive water heater ever made. The new appliance is expected to retail for about $1,200. For more information, go to geappliances.com forward slash geospring. And on a smaller scale, another company is relocating its headquarters to Louisville, bringing along quality, high-paying jobs with it. Louisville will soon be home to a major player in the financial industry. Jefferson National Financial is relocating its corporate headquarters from New York City to the Derby City, and Governor Bashir claimed it a victory for the city's economy. Investments like one, the one that Jefferson National Financial is announcing today wouldn't happen if it and other companies didn't have confidence in our local workforce and our local infrastructure. Success like this doesn't just happen. It requires hard work. As a leader in the financial services industry, Jefferson National Financial serves more than 43,000 customers nationwide and will bring nearly 100 new jobs to Louisville. And these are high paying jobs, jobs with an annual average salary of more than $85,000. State incentives help make the relocation possible, and city leaders are confident that this new firm will bring great things to our local economy. For more information on Jefferson National, visit Jeff nat.com and check for Louisville area jobs which will be posted through careerbuilder.com and here's some more news from Louisville Metro Louisville is getting quite a reputation these days as a foodie town we recently scored the only North American spot on Zagat's list of the top eight foodie getaways around the world our city's eateries were praised for bourbon inspired cuisine with both rustic and urban influences among the other cities to make the list were Cairo and Kuala Lumpur Malaysia 
And on a similar note, another local restaurant has opened up in the Nulu neighborhood on East Market Street. Mayor Fisher came out to celebrate and officially opened the restaurant's doors. One, two, three, hello! Taco Punk opened in late January using fresh and local ingredients with a comfortable, conscious vibe. We really price things to be affordable, but also at the same time uh, purchasing the best food that we can find from local sources and all the sustainable places that we can. I commend Taco Punk for being part of this scene now and really adding to our authenticity of restaurant types and independent restaurants that we have here in Louisville and the fantastic food that they bring to us as well. Long John Silver's knows fish. They've been serving it up quickly and inexpensively since 1969. And now the company is locating its headquarters in Louisville. The tremendous efforts by both Louisville and Kentucky quickly made our decision to remain a Louisville, Kentucky company a very, very easy one. Newly formed LJS Partners acquired Long John Silvers from locally owned Yum Brands last December. We were glad as a commonwealth to be able to provide the incentives to assist and support their efforts. It does create and or continue 70 jobs. And when you know people say 70 jobs, that's 70 families. That's 70 folks who are going to have an opportunity to uh, pay for the roof over their head, to pay for an opportunity with groceries on the table. Long John Silver's has about 1,300 franchise restaurants worldwide, and company executives are focused on the future. We've just launched a new premium product called thick cut cod for the upcoming Lenten season. It's the first of many menu initiatives planned over the next three years that we expect to grow the overall appeal and the overall relevancy of our brand. It's not just the city's food that's getting attention. This fall, Louisville's waterfront will host Fashion Week, filled with not only the season's trends, but equal parts competition and parties too. Three nights will also include an emerging designer competition, a modeling competition, and we'll hold the first annual waterfront, stamp, waterfront stiletto stampede, a race in high heels. We're excited to bring this opportunity to the fashion scene in Louisville, and we're, and we're more excited about the potential economic impact to our community. It's important, too, that our, our city obviously is seen as a fun place to be that's always doing new things, so it's this type of creativity and entrepreneurship that our city is no, known for. From October 17th through the 20th, festival organizers hope to showcase local talent while celebrating and benefiting a local treasure. Waterfront Park is one of the crown jewels of our community. Its development has taken millions of dollars and many years to complete. To maintain it, it will, take, it will require a lot of uh, additional resources, financial resources. Waterfront Fashion Week is an opportunity to raise funds while having fun. For more information or to purchase tickets for the event, go to waterfrontfashionweek.com. The city's copy of the Declaration of Independence, one of the earliest 31 copies printed, was recently transported from Metro Hall to the University of Louisville to be scanned and appraised. The high-definition image of the document will help estimate its value so that it can be properly insured and also help experts decide if the document needs repairs. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the 502 Report. Until next time, take care. Metro TV, a public service of Louisville Metro Government.